Hello YouTube, I'm working on a Tascam mixer. Uh, model number is um, <clears throat> FW-1082 and uh, this thing's a real bear to disassemble. One thing I do want to mention um, when you work on it back here, there's the only two uh, machine screws, that are, there's four machine screws, one uh, fits on the, um, the on and off button and uh, one fits on the coaxial, the top one, I mean not fits, it's supposed to go on the coaxial on the top screw where the in is and one goes on the foot switch, those are the only three uh, machine screws and um, this is my first time working on this unit so we're just going to have to figure it out as we go. So far I've taken a lot of screws out and uh, I'm not able to um, get this thing disassembled yet. So I'm just, we're going to continue on doing this. I'm going to take these IDE cables out. <clears throat> Put them aside. I pulled all the screws off of the um, power supply, but I have not been able to take it out. Here's uh, two of the machine screws that I told you are supposed to go on here. Here's the part number if you guys can see it. Let me read that to you guys. E90 209 100 A as an Apple. There's also a PCB PSW FW1082, which is the model number for this. That's the. I don't know, whatever you want to call that. Not the power supply. Where, where your uh, on and off switch and your. Uh, 12 or uh, is that 12 volts? Let me see this power supply here. This thing is actually, um, yeah, it's 12 volts, uh, center tap positive, and it's 2.5 amps. Okay. Let's continue uh, the surgery here. So many screws. What I'm dealing with again here is. Um, and so the sound cards are not sound Dealing with is uh, no audio out. When you plug in a microphone, the customer said it's, uh, you have nothing on the monitor out. Other than that, he said it's fully functional. So uh, let's just continue on disassembling here. It is certainly, a very difficult unit to take apart. Okay. Believe it or not, many DOS games are capable of multiplayer. And the easiest way to do this is with a Cut these zip ties here. Like You'll need to make sure the cable is 9 pin male on both sides and it's wired up with a null motor, meaning the send and receive wire across. Alright. Then you can invite a friend over and you can have hours of fun playing two player games. Another screw down here. The screws that hold the boards in are the same, so you don't have to worry about mismatching anything here. For some reason, the coax even though I took the two screws off of here, coaxial, the in and out, the orange plugs back here, they're, uh, they don't want to come loose. You have to be very patient when you work on this stuff of equipment because you can create more damage. So just take your time and be patient. So far, everything's coming off except for this board with the um, firewire and the coax cable. That way when I turn on the computer, it 
put it straight to a DOS prompt. If for some reason I want to run Windows, I can just type Win at the prompt. And you might even ask, what's the point of even having Windows 95 on a system like this? I mean, it's virtually impossible to surf the internet, or even today's internet, on a computer like that. Well, believe it or not, there actually are some good reasons. One, it makes it easier to transfer my DOS games over the network by simply browsing <coughs> the network here and directing them over. But you might even find yourself wanting to play some early Windows games. This is a little tough to take apart, I'll tell you that. Now, unfortunately, I've worked on a Carver in the past, and it was very similar and built that this assembly was very tough. I uh, I think I uploaded a, a YouTube video on, on the boards, not on this assembly on the other unit, on the Carver. But I tell you what, we're uh, looks like things are starting to move here. So I mean, pretty much anything from 1985 or newer is going to have the same problem running those older games. This is just not fun. All right, somehow these coax connectors decided to loosen up, so we can pull this board out. Okay, set that aside. Here's what this board looks like. And uh, part number off of it is right here. You can see it right in the middle. It's that um, E902-087-1. Main board. 1804-1082. Also, I'm not sure it's possible all right, more screws to take out. So, if you're wondering what happened to that card I sent off, believe it or not, I got it back a week later inside of an envelope. The post office makes the card saying the permit was expired, but it did make it all the way from Fort Worth to Philadelphia before they realized they showed. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're finally in. Excuse me for a second, YouTube. You gotta take a minute break here. The reason I decided to do this video because there's nothing on YouTube like it. Welcome to another episode of the 8-Bit Guy. Now, before um, we get started, I wanted to draw your attention to this beautiful plaque uh, that YouTube sent me, <coughs> uh, congratulating me on reaching 100,000 subscribers. All right, now, I need my glasses again. A while, uh, to get me the plaque because I'm actually nearly okay. 200,000 subscribers now. And I just wanted to say that when I started So here's channel, the power I supply. Had no idea that it would ever be this popular and I have you guys to thank for it. And uh, uh, you guys are what keep me I'm sure to get this back metal off here. Recently, I did an episode where I it's in my way. Yeah, I can't seem to get it to loosen up. To see if it was obsolete yet. Surprisingly, I found that it would still handle any modern device. <sighs> and so I began to wonder: Has Moore's law finally come to an end, or has computer progress finally slowed down? I don't have schematics on this, so I'm just kind of like working in the dark here. And you do the exact same experiment, you'll see what I'm talking about. Try going to your 1990. All the screws are off, but this thing just doesn't, that back plate doesn't want to come off. This back plate here. Okay. That's not easy. Okay. Let me see, perhaps by uh, removing this board here. <coughs> that will give me a little more access. Well, in order to go forward, I'm going to have to straighten this chart down some. There, that will give us some more room. Over the next five years, memory doubles. <coughs> so we're near the growth we saw before. Let's shrink the chart down again. Okay. This time it quadruples. Let's shrink the chart again. Wow, another 16-fold increase in RAM. Let's shrink again and check this out. And this. And that's where we are today. Okay, one more over here. So I think we can safely say, as far as RAM goes, there's been no slowing down on that. Okay, so what about process? Let's just look at clock speed starting in 1975. The typical speed okay. was one megahertz. That looks good. Later, there was no 
It's starting to come apart a little bit. This one doesn't want to move. So let's go ahead and move this board here. If anybody has uh, access well, to schematics for, that, uh, for, thing, for this model, I would uh, appreciate if you guys would mail it. To me, it would really make my life a lot easier. Here's a business card, <coughs> phone number, email address. Okay. All right, that's a little better. Okay, now we got nothing. We have a lot of switching ICs over here. I have to um, run power to these ICs. I mean, run that to these boards and see if they're actually switching. Um, here's a part number off of this board. It's actually a TAC board. Um, part number E902 0800B. Okay, that's for this board right here. And this board here is also a TAC. Um, part number is <coughs> E902 0800C. There is a sticker on here. I don't know if it means anything, but it's T410 068. And the part number on uh, all your mic inputs and all that is um, E902. 0800B. <coughs> and that's also a TAC board right here. Okay, I need to know where. The audio section is. Apparently, the power supply doesn't need any work because it's um, the unit is fully functional. I can see this unit has some hours on it because it does have some uh, rain cracks, rain cracks. So the power supply has to be soldered again. Have to check these power resistors right here. One thing that sort of stood out to me when you were talking about all that was the graph where the processing power overall went down around 20% or so. And that sort of lines up with an interesting time in the, the personal computer market where a lot of <coughs> things like netbooks were getting really popular. Tablets were getting there. They were, you know, a couple of years off probably for being um, mainstream. I believe those uh, are the Chrome only two boards that I need to, I mean, three boards that I need to work on. For a time. Maybe this one here, the mic, also. We have to check these resistors. I mean, not the resistors, transistor, make sure there's nothing open or shorted. Check these ICs over here. Those are very common ICs. We should have them in stock. Um, let me turn that down a little bit here. I'm not exactly sure what's playing in the background. Okay, turn that off. <sighs> This way you guys can hear me a little better, especially when I give part numbers. This is going to be mostly a parts list. I'm not going to do the actual repair on uh, um, this video, but I definitely have my work cut out for me. There's a lot of work to go through here. Um, I'm happy that it's only audio issue, so it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, 